What about making your sound better? Okay, so here we are in part two of our tutorial on how to make a live, interactive live set in Ableton. So, what we're going to go ahead and do now is create our template for our live set. So we've opened a new blank Ableton file and we're going to go ahead to kind of build out, um, we're, we're in the live view here, not the arrangement view, so session view, and we, and you can toggle that by hitting tab. So we're going to go ahead and build this out corresponding to those trackouts that we did. So if you remember before, um, we did trackouts, our trackouts had three audio tracks and then there was one that we kind of left blank as our MIDI track. And again, you can do this however you want to, but this is just how I'm doing it for the sake of this tutorial. You could have 50 tracks if you can handle it. However you want to do your track out is up to you, but um, this is how we did ours. So. We're going to delete everything except for our one audio track and we'll just duplicate that three times con control D or command D if you're on a Mac and then we're going to create a MIDI track for our little live uh, you know our our instrument track that we were thinking about having for either our SPD or our MIDI controller we'll figure that out a little later when we get into MIDI uh, surfaces so uh, and the control surfaces, I should say. Um, so we're going to go ahead and rename this one. Um, our, I think our first um, track was a drum track in our track out. So we'll do, we'll do uh, control R is the rename or command R if you're on a Mac. Um, after you select that and hit tab, it'll automatically go to the next one, which is nice. That'll save you some time. I think our next thing was a percussion track. Um, and then our last one was a bass or synth track in the two track outs that we did. So we'll rename those, and then we'll just call this one uh, Instrument Rack or something like that. Because um, that's what we're going to end up putting our vocal chops on and our, our little percussion track that we want to play on our MIDI controller. So we'll leave that one be for now, um, but I'm going to go ahead and color code these all. Um, a color, we'll do... How about pink and we'll make our instrument rack uh, baby blue okay so I'm gonna delete these two send channels for now just to make things look simpler okay so now what we can go ahead and do is dive into the folder that we sent our track outs to for each song and just pretty much drag and drop to the corresponding um, track um, so it'll be pretty much following the rules as long as we did our track out clean. Um, and before we want to do that, um, just hop into preferences really quick. So options, preferences, or if you're on a Mac, it's going to actually be under the live menu and be, or, or yeah, I think it's under Ableton or live or something like that. And then uh, hit preferences. And you're going to want to just make sure that your default warp mode is set to complex. Um, it's just, it's just the best mode for warping. It'll sound the cleanest. There's all these other ones I like to mess around with that are fun and the repitch and stuff, but for the sake of what we're doing now and in our live sets, you're definitely gonna wanna use that complex and the complex pro. Um, we'll take out create fades on clip edges because we um, exported our stuff using that second cycle pass or that export as loop option so we don't even really have any seams there it'll be pretty relatively seamless so we'll take that out we don't want them to fade in or out um, we're gonna turn off auto warp long samples um, just so it doesn't do any weirdness so yeah that looks good so now we'll navigate to our Ableton fo folder which I actually already had open but um, yeah wherever you exported your live set track outs too. So here's my live set track outs for that first song that we exported and um, pretty much drag and drop corresponding to your template. So we got the bass synth, drop that, that's the part one. And uh, we have bass synth part 
to and actually before we do that let's go ahead and name our scenes over here on the right side scenes are where if you don't know you can launch a series of clips all uh, if they're in the same row they'll all launch together synchronized so it's kind of a good way to launch that's how we're gonna be launching everything for this live set so I'm gonna just rename the scene really quick um, song song one hit enter and we're also gonna select the correct launch tempo for this song. So we'll do um, right click that and do edit launch tempo when you right click the scene. And over here you can see in our, um, when we double click on this clip, the, the BPM that we exported that was 135. So we'll stick to that over here, type in 135, hit enter. And maybe we'll color this one. Um, how about a night, uh, just a, a red, how's that sound? So that'll be color coded for our first song. Um, so we'll continue here on our track outs. Um, and actually one thing that we can do to make things easier is just go ahead and duplicate this one a bunch and delete these. But just so we can drag and drop these uh, clips as needed and they'll be in the right corresponding um, BPM and song. So we've got our part, whoops. Don't wanna to listen to that, we'll be listening to enough already. Okay, we'll drop our part two in here, our part two drums will go in here, our part two percussion, part three bass will go here, part three drums. So you just drag and drop corresponding to your template that we made. We can delete these excess duplicated scenes that we had. And now if we go ahead and hit this, these scenes, got our little intro here. Cool, so as you can see, these are all launching properly. Um, they all sound pretty good. Um, only thing is it sounds like if uh, you hit play on one of these, we are redlining so hard over here. Let's throw a limiter on this master. That will clean that up. Because when you exported these, they all, you know, depending on what you put on your tracks, I use a bunch of compressors and redline these really hard. Um, and you're gonna wanna um, throw a little limiter on it so you don't get too crunchy. So we got our parts all dropped here and I'm gonna go ahead and color code these correspondent to their um, part. So we got part one, we'll make red, part two, we'll make green, and part three, how about we make it blue? So RGB, there we go. So that's our first song. Now we can go ahead and follow that exact same thing for um, our next remaining tracks for our next song. So our, our next song has, um, we'll drop in one of these part one drums. Let's look at this. BPM of 127, so we'll go ahead and edit the BPM, edit launch tempo, punch in 127, there you go, and let's rename this, um, we'll make it song two, all right, there it is, and let's color code this one, how about pink, why not? All right, so again, just keep following our template. We'll drop in part two drums, drop in part two synth, drop in part three drums, part three percussion, and part three synth, cool. So we'll follow our same guidelines we had up here. So our first intro section will be red, our second one, and you can do this by clicking and holding shift and clicking here. It'll select both of those and it will change the color for both of those as well. So we'll make that blue. Let's see if I can match that blue. Wait, where are you? This one? Yeah, that looks about right. Oh wait, no. Green is what we want next. Green, then blue for part three. So part three, blue. Cool, okay, sweet, so that's looking pretty good. Oh, and we can go ahead and 
copy these names into here. And the launch tempos as well. Make these that same ugly pink color. And if we hit go on these. Cool, so those are playing properly and looping properly. And you can hit stop, you can play them one at a time. Possibilities are endless. So, and as you can see, because we changed those launch tempos to be the correct corresponding tempo, we it is changing up here as well. So that's great for uh, if you have a lot of tempo changes in your set, you don't even have to worry about riding this thing too hard. You can maybe ride it while you mix, something like that. So um, in the next video, uh, we're gonna be talking about some different effects that you can use and building effects racks, when, ones that I like to use for um, having kind of a dynamic setup here. and. You know, I think moving forward, it's just important to focus on having kind of creative ways to mix. Now that you have all these parts all tracked out, you can for the first time now mess around with your songs in track outs as, um, you know, almost like mashing up certain parts. So like, you know, we could drop in maybe the bass from uh, this track to here or something like that and maybe... Uh, or maybe add an extra and maybe use, whoops, I keep hitting F11, um, and maybe use this as a way to transition. So let's say we're here, you know. So we kind of have the bass from song one, mashing up with the drums of song two. That's a fun way to... So as you can see, you can start to really now mash up your songs and be um, more expressive with with your live sets. Um, whereas, you know, before when, when you're just tracking out two tracks or left and right, you don't have as many options with that. And I think that the more in-depth that you do it, the more you're gonna see the results of how creative you can really get. So again, those are just some super basic examples of how to do this, but hopefully you'll be able to take that and apply it to your music and your songs and really start to create um, a dynamic live set for yourself. So in the, yeah, like I said, the next video, we're gonna be talking about um, effects and how we can work with those. So I will, See you in that next video.